Hi, this is Dr. Jonathan Youssef, Networking for Your Optimal Health. Today's topic will be about anxiety. And one of my patients asked me to talk a little bit more about how and when do you think maybe this anxiety that you're dealing with or the stress or the environmental factors around you might somehow be causing you to feel either like you're having a panic attack or if you're having an anxiety attack or do you have just generalized anxiety disorder so this is kind of like a vague topic every one of us has a little bit of stress in their lives we might have a little bit of pressure to work more do more activities at home and perform better and so we have expectations and for someone like myself who has work and and um, trying to run an office and have multiple people that count on me I have to look at different ways of de-stressing and uh, one of the things that I noticed in my patients specifically for those who are on the high performance side is that they're expected to do everything they want to be the super mom or the super dad they want to be a super wife or husband and they want to be a super successful executive at their office or they want to be at the high end of the spectrum just for uh, project management and uh, perform multitasking and so when I discussed before about my patients who are functionally attention deficit I love doing those things and I love being excited about multiple tasks that we can do and so I want to give back to the community I want to give back to our society and that's how I see us doing so by being functionally um, high performance. So where does stress come into factor? Well, when those expectations are so great and we try so hard to please everybody that our stress level goes up uh, tremendously. And of course we have things happen in our lives like a death of a loved one or a, an event that causes us to rethink about our life and where we're at. So. When you're thinking about panic attacks and anxiety, one of the things that I want to look at is, or how to manage it in a natural way, is to look at your uh, what we call an EQ or an EI, which is your emotional intelligence. So you know how you work out every day and you try to, or every other day, if maybe it's not three times a week, whatever your routine is, you work out to sort of build your muscles, and that helps your musculoskeletal body stay in shape. When you brush your teeth and you manage to do those in a ritualistic habit forming way every day you are essentially uh, causing creating habits that will help you stay in shape stay healthy keep your hygiene up when you think about your emotional health you need to practice that pretty much every day if you can three times a week if you can't or a frequent enough and what I mean by practicing your emotional health and your emotional EQ or EI, I ask that you consider maybe maybe keeping a journal. That's one way. They, they think about being grateful, being uh, sort of not appreciative, but being thankful for everything that you have. Um, and by being thankful, um, one of the things that uh, happens is that you don't think about stress you don't think about everything else when you're being thankful or you're being appreciated of you're forgetting about or you're not thinking about being fearful or anxious or stressed or worried about the next step in your life so what I want you to do is sort of run a practice run in your brain about some of those things that you think about negatively let's say if something happens you made a mistake and you keep replaying that over and over again in your brain, let's practice on lighter levels or like less uh, problematic issues to practice stopping that brain's hyperactivity and practicing that emotional intelligence or that emotional health will hopefully prevent you from having to revisit those bad memories over and over and over again. And by practicing on some light problems, right, light mistakes or little things that you've tried over the over a period of time will maybe help you when bigger things or bigger problems or bigger stressors come into your life. So that's one way of looking at how to sort of practice for your mental health. 
So this is Dr. Jonathan Youssef, not working for your optimal health. I just wanted to take a break and um, revisit some of just the quick topics that we talked about, which are improving your mental health by practicing and exercising. And one of the things that we said was by being appreciative when you're having some difficulty with your rethinking over and over those mistakes. So blocking that, rethinking it, and revisiting it. Thank you. This is Dr. Youssef, not working for your optimal health. Now we will continue the show. Another possible way of managing your mental health and your psychological stability is by looking at how you feel. And when we talk about emotional intelligence and emotional cue, we're looking at how you feel and understanding yourself and how you respond to certain stressors. When you understand yourself and you understand your stressors, you can also focus on what the other person might be feeling so hypothetically if somebody else is having a bad day and you are in a situation where you're talking about something and they're having a bad day so they're responding in a negative way towards you it may have nothing to do with your uh, your situation but recognizing that they're having a bad day or they're having some emotional stability issues or um, responses you might want to kind of hone your energy level and refocus your energy level on something else and maybe kind of walk away from that or give it some time, revisit this in another topic so that you're not responding to something that may have nothing or no control over emotionally. So the two ways that I kind of revisit the emotional health is one, um, stop reliving those mistakes over and over again. Secondly, take a look at what... um, how you respond to other people and what other people are, um, what how other people are giving it to you and how you feel that day. So if you haven't slept well, if you haven't felt good, or you haven't been eating right or exercising, or you feel a little bit more um, stressed that day for whatever reason, or angry, or happy, or whatever the emotion might be, you may want to see how that or how, adjust yours. To kind of be able to, or if you understand it more, you may be able to handle your situations a little bit better on a day-to-day basis. So um, thinking about your uh, psychological and mental health and practicing it. Secondly, to uh, refocus your energies and avoid those repeated mistakes in your head over and over again. And then lastly, um, trying to think about what you're feeling like that day and then how other people are feeling and sort of adjusting your tone or your emotional health depending on the circumstance that you're in. So some of the other topics that I want to talk about is panic attacks. Panic attacks are sort of almost like a symptom of, if they're not a sign of, generalized anxiety disorder or a in itself can be independent. So I had one or two patients who explained to me that they started feeling different symptoms and it could be very vague as to what panic attacks are. So they can be uh, like an upset stomach. They could possibly have a little bit of nausea. They can have some chest pain. They can have shortness of breath, heart palpitations, or um, just maybe even uh, general malaise or weakness. And they think that, well, it could just probably be a medical issue. It could be related to something in their stomach or or possibly it could be something that could have eaten or perhaps even a cardiac issue like heart problem. So when I think about some of these, I also want to make sure that all of those medical problems like your thyroid, your blood count, your vitamins are all looked at before we can jump to the conclusion that it's a panic attack or a uh, emotional or mental health concern. When I do rule that out, I think about what can we do basically on a homeopathic or a holistic or conservative measures first and and try and deal with these issues um, in a healthy way, in a more natural way with your diet and your exercise. And I have a list of possible items that we can share together with this. When you're dealing with medication, though, there could be some that we can use to help address panic attacks. Sometimes the SSRI families or the serotonin reuptake inhibitors are very commonly used and that's definitely my first choice in treating somebody who has 
these conditions, but not necessarily my last choice. And it's not always just about one medication. Sometimes you have to mix some others. When you're dealing with a true panic attack, we used to, um, and I'm not quite sure if it's still the case, but we used to recommend benzodiazepines, and that's like the clonopin or the Xanax or Valium that m some people might request. And while I, you know, find those helpful in a, an acute panic attack, sometimes that's not so great because of the habit potential and the addictive properties of them, as well as the side effects, which are drowsiness and respiratory depression. I would love to kind of share some of these ideas and probably when you're feeling these symptoms and you're not sure what they're coming from, perhaps a discussion with your primary doctor or your uh, specialist could be very useful for this and um, would love to hear from you guys as this is our lifetime family that we're thinking about and would love to share more ideas with you. This is Dr. Jonathan Youssef, Networking for Your Optimal Health.